Now, since my first video did so well, I figured why not do another one? Here are five more PS Vita game ports that are near identical to the console versions. Number five, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I'm telling you, if it weren't for the PS Vita's control scheme, this would be an exact port of the console version. There are enough buttons on the PlayStation Vita to accommodate all the moves, but they're not placed in a way that makes it very intuitive to play. Pulling off simple 2-in-1 combos are easy, but enhanced moves and canceling into the super arts can feel a bit clumsy. An extra L2 and R2 would have done wonders for this game. There is the shortcut option of assigning certain combos to the touchscreen, but I feel like this takes away from the overall gameplay. I mean, why bother playing Street Fighter if you can just tap on the screen all day? In terms of graphical detail, the PS Vita port looks very good. Characters are only slightly downgraded from their console counterparts, with background animations taking a heavier hit. Some of the stages are more comparable than others, while some look like they're missing entire set pieces. I mean, take a look at this level. Doesn't the PS Vita port look a little skimpy with the tree branches? In the end, the PS Vita port still retains the overall look and feel of what you got on the PlayStation 3. And although I'm always praising the OLED, I feel it makes the screen look slightly oversaturated this time around. This is one game that probably looks better on the slim model. Content wise, it has everything included in the console version. Arcade, training, and various other challenge options round out the package. On top of that, I think the online multiplayer still works. Your mileage may vary, but it does offer a nice distraction from the single player modes. Just be ready to have your ass handed to you. And with the ability to share custom data between the PS3 and PS Vita, you could tell Capcom gave an honest effort in trying to support Sony's new handheld. It's a shame the game never got the attention it deserved. The concept of bringing two of the most popular fighting franchises together was an interesting idea. I remember hearing something along the lines of too little too late combined with a rocky launch didn't help much either. If you can put up with a slightly less than adequate control setup on the PlayStation Vita, Street Fighter Cross Tekken will provide some fighting fun. Number 4. God of War Collection Listen, I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about when it comes to the port of this game on the PS Vita. I honestly think it runs just fine. Yeah, it looks bad when you're watching the comparison video on Digital Foundry, but when you're actually playing it on the Vita, it's not very noticeable. I played on the normal difficulty and managed to make it to the very end of God of War 2. There were moments of slowdown, but it usually occurs when I'm already in the middle of a move or when I'm being knocked to the ground. Either way, it didn't hinder my ability to control the character. The frame rate isn't perfect, obviously. The PlayStation 3 is coming in at a constant 60 frame per second with PS Vita hovering anywhere from 25 to 30, depending on what's on the screen. The Vita is nowhere near the quality of its console big brother, but it never got to the point where I didn't know what was going on. I honestly don't know how some people can complain about this port, yet give Borderlands 2 on the PS Vita a free pass. Oh right, it's open world. The two graphical setbacks you are going to notice is that the image will look a little soft on the PS Vita. It's not in HD like it is on the PlayStation 3, but it is comparable to the original PS2 version. Also, you have to keep in mind that playing on a smaller screen will help with the image quality as well. The second problem, and the biggest issue I have with this port on PS Vita, are the cutscenes. They look pretty awful. They're still kept in their original aspect ratio, running at a resolution similar to something on the Sega CD. Fortunately, they're only cutscenes which have no impact on the actual gameplay. God of War 2 still retains all the extra costumes and play options as well. The Vita port is, however, missing the behind-the-scenes feature found on the PlayStation 3. Apart from the slower frame rate and the softer image, the God of War collection on the PS Vita is pretty much identical to the console version. Guys, come on. The frame rate isn't that bad. Just stop it already. Number 3. Injustice, Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition. Another prime example of why I consider the PS Vita to be the ultimate fighting machine. I mean, when you think about it, where else could you play a portable version of Injustice? Nintendo Switch can't do that. I reviewed this game a while back, and at the time, I wasn't too impressed with the graphics. But after coming back to it again after so many years, I'm starting to think I was a little too hard on it. After playing for a few minutes, I can confidently say that Injustice on the PlayStation Vita is not as bad looking as some make it out to be. Sure, character models and textures have taken a significant drop from the console versions, but the smooth frame rate and destructible environments more than make up for it. In some instances, you could say the game looks pretty amazing. Considering how smoothly the combat flows, I couldn't help but be quite impressed. Although I will admit it is a little jarring during the character intros before each fight. The game uses high quality textures during these moments, but switches over to lower quality ones as soon as the fight starts. It's a little weird and will take some time to get used to. What made me forgive all the graphical shortcomings are the environments. 
fully interactive as you can punch and kick your opponent into the background as well as through to the next stage. They look great on consoles and truth be told, they look pretty good on the Vita as well. There's less particle effects flying around, but they all play out the same. Crazy, creative, and always over the top. The PS Vita port includes every gameplay options available on consoles, as well as the six additional DLC characters. This is one fighting game that's going to keep you busy for a while. There's also touch controls, which work as you would expect. It's alright, I guess. It doesn't really add anything to the gameplay, but it is neat to touch that screen every once in a while. Aside from the downgraded graphics, which will take some getting used to, everything else runs beautifully. If you enjoyed Injustice on consoles, then you're gonna like it on the PS Vita. Number 2. Rayman Legends Wow, I've forgotten how good this game looks on the PlayStation Vita. Another title that takes full advantage of the Vita's OLED. Colors are simply beautiful in Rayman Legends. The entire game looks like a classical Disney cartoon. As I was capturing footage, I completely lost track of time and just kept playing. The image might be bigger if you're playing on the consoles, but this is one of those games better suited for a portable handheld. Side-by-side -side comparison shots do not do the PlayStation Vita justice at all. Trust me, this is one game you're gonna have to see in person. It can definitely hold its own, even against the PlayStation 4. The only drawback I could think of are those damn Murphy levels that require the Vita's front touchscreen. They're okay, but I feel like they completely ruin the pace of the game. You're running through trying to beat the level as fast as you can, and then you feel like you're at a complete stop whenever you have to use the front touch. The PS4 handles it a lot better, I feel, as all Murphy interactions are assigned to the circle button. I really wish there was an option like this for the PlayStation Vita. I guess it's up to personal preference. It's not that the front touch doesn't work, I just think it's a little wonky at times. Just my opinion. Another drawback is the slightly long load times on the PS Vita. There's a little too many loading screens in my opinion. One before the level and another one after. Sometimes you just want to go, go, go. My final complaint would have to be the musical levels. There's just not enough of them. Number 1. Final Fantasy X-2 Now, this takes me back to my junior year in high school. You guys wouldn't believe how late I stayed up playing this game. I think it was a school night too. This is exactly as I remembered it back on the PS2. There are the additional last mission and bonus audio track found in each version, as well as the ability to transfer your save file back and forth. Similar to what I said about Final Fantasy X HD, X2 is basically identical across the PS3 and PlayStation Vita. Of course, with the added benefit of using an OLED, the colors will pop a little more on the PS Vita. In contrast, playing on the PS3 will yield sharper textures and a more subdued color palette. They both look great in my opinion, but being that I'm a Vita guy, I'd have to side with the OLED. Some of the gameplay mechanics haven't aged very well. Combat does take a while to pick up, and having to find your way around the environment with random encounters can get a little annoying, especially when all you want to do is explore. If you loved Final Fantasy X HD, then you're gonna like X2. It's nowhere near as good as the original, but it's worth your time if you want to see how the story ends. Plus, you get to visit places from the previous game. How cool is that? Now, if you want to see more awesome PlayStation Vita content, make sure you click the links on the screen or the ones that are pinned down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.